Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I will present in some preliminary results uh, concerning the retrieval of linguistic gender markers in writing in Spanish. And this experiment, experiment concerns uh, 19th century novels. I won't have time to go over, over all the results. So this will work as a teaser and you can find me in the breaks and we can have uh, long discussions about this. Uh, sociolinguistics has been, it's been focused on, has focused on uh, uh, spontaneous speech. So writing has received little attention and literary writing even less. But it is important to be uh, aware and to know what are the linguistic mechanisms that uh, people do dominate, especially if there is uh, sociolinguistic, uh, sociological distinctions in this sense. And there are many literary questions that have been already answered with this type of methods concerning stylistics, concerning canonicity, or even gender attribution of anonymous or pseudonymous um, works. But there is also linguistic knowledge to gain from this type of research, and this will be my research question what type of sociolinguistic knowledge we can gain from uh, using stylometric uh, measures with literary writing. I've worked with uh, LTEC, uh, taking out uh, some authors that had strong relations with America. I carry out set analysis using Paiseta, which is now being developed under the name Pai Distinto, and I mainly worked with the uh, algorithm by uh, Burroughs in 2007 and also with the log base 2 version by Church and colleagues. And I have also calculated the specificity index of certain uh, elements using the software TXM. And uh, concerning the uh, set analysis, I carried out also um, exercises with random sample to be uh, to be able to uh, evaluate the pertinence of the female-male distinction, and it was indeed distant. There has been already a few uh, works that have carried out similar analysis with English and with novels as well, and they um, uh, present some uh, division of semantic fields that match certain stereotypes and we have this uh, work by Rubitsky and also this one by Whitman and O'Sullivan, and they um, point out how also our own biases are taking an effect when we are interpreting the results we obtain from uh, the uh, frequency lists, for instance. And in my case, uh, we can see in bold the semantic fields that match what we have seen in these other studies of for English. So we have, a, in the case of the female corpus, we have uh, nature as a, a very prominent semantic field, and then we have the family relations, uh, body parts in uh, Whitman and O'Sullivan uh, was also one of the um, semantic fields distinct, distinct in the uh, women writers. Then we have the candy verbs and interaction language, emotion words, and in general, uh, much more adjectives. And some of them could also be considered that are part of the emotion words. But uh, in general, we can see here for the, the um, specificity of part of the speech, and for the women, the uh, possessive pronouns, and here are the, the, the adjectives as the two more um, specific, specific uh, part of the speech. And in the case of the uh, male corpus, we have uh, quantifiers and cardinals, which also uh, matches some of the results uh, found in Rybitsky, for instance. Um, in the case of the male corpus, we have spatial words as one of the distinctive uh, semantic fields. Then we have words related to the description of the action and then to something we could call professional political domain. 
And uh, something else I was interested in looking at was the epistemic adverbs and adjectives, because in previous literature there was a bit of a um, contradictions about this. For instance, in Pennebaker, Pennebaker uh, 2011, uh, we see that always and absolutely is considered a female marker, but in the results by Whitman and O'Sullivan, uh, absolutely was one of the uh, male markers. And then uncertainty, language or less certainty was a uh, female marker. In uh, our case, we find that uh, never and always are indeed more uh, distinct in the uh, female corpus. And for this uh, less certainty, like uh, possible, uh, like um, likely, for instance, or maybe, uh, it's actually uh, banal. Uh, the results are banal in here. And for the distinct uh, part in the uh, male corpus, we have uh, words that are not always epistemic, they are polysemic, like for instance, possible. Uh, it's a distinct word, it's a specific of the male corpus, but uh, it's not always epistemic. It's, it also has the capacity. So, uh, and we have the word sure. Uh, in Spanish, but it also means safe. <laughs> so um, the polysemic here, the polysemicity here is a uh, problem to evaluate the uh, words used independently. And then uh, for, I have also worked a little bit with the period signal. Other previous studies have shown us the strength of this uh, signal. And in this case, the comparison between the most uh, recent novels with the uh, oldest ones show that indeed the distance is higher than the gender uh, partition. And uh, one of the elements that uh, came in this, uh, in this um, study was the distribution between uh, Bos and Usted, which is an example of a uh, semantic of a, a linguistic change, a word that has been replaced by the other. So this was a great example to try to uh, check the uh, theory of change from above and see uh, if indeed uh, we can see, we can create the hypothesis that women have used the word usted, which is the winner, uh, before the men. And we can see that in the first period is definitely uh, specific of the female corpus. And uh, now to reach the conclusions. Uh, the first part is to point out the limitations of this work. I think the most important one is the fact that we need to evaluate the, uh, sub uh, the subgenre of the um, of these different novels and also to isolate the direct speech. Uh, once to be able to evaluate properly the Bosu state thing because it's a, a honorific, so it's going to uh, work out just in the direct speech. And then to evaluate if there is a characterization of the characters from a linguistic point of view depending on their uh, social status. So um, this will be part of the future work. And as a conclusion, I think that there is indeed uh, linguistic knowledge to gain from uh, this type of studies. And we have seen that there are uh, similar trends that have been observed in other languages. And then uh, there is the relevance of the period variable that we can use to uh, precisely gain knowledge about the chronolects, about the uh, um, the, the, the iconic variation, but we need to take into consideration the uh, genre because uh, um, there are some genres that are going to be more uh, explored by male authors than from female authors, like for instance historical uh, novels, and maybe the fact that there is um, archaisms, that was also one of the uh, results in uh, Rivitsky's work, 
this might be uh, related to the fact that there are more historical novels in the male corpus than in the female corpus. And thank you. <laughs> <laughs>